Greetings, and welcome to a Cool Dude Clem thing. So, we're going to be doing more operating system stuff today. Yes, I know you're probably a bit bored with that, but I'm going to try out something. Well, the weather can't seem to make up its mind whether it wants to be sunny or rainy. I mean, just look at that. We're in May right now, and look at those temperatures. It should be way higher than that. Yeah, that's what we're getting all this week. Rant about the weather over. So, I have made my own customised version of Windows 10, which I've affectionately called ClemOS. I use the Major Geek's customization tool. I'm not going to do a video on that because Chris Tyson, Tyson Tech I've already done a video on that, so... Here it is, my custom version of Windows 10. On a thumb drive, I've also included a folder with all my software and stuff on there. So, I'm going to stick a spare hard drive in this computer, and we'll see what happens. Okay then, got the spare hard drive in the computer, that's the only hard drive connected. Now I'm hoping that I put, as I put, additional files on this, on this little thumb drive. I hope that'll still be bootable. Let's turn on, see what happens. I don't know if I set the bias to not boot or boot. We'll see what happens. Okay, it appears to be booting up. Although I don't know if it's booting up from the hard drive or the USB, so that's gonna be a little bit of an adventure. I have a feeling that it's booting up from the hard drive. Because this is the what I saw when it was booting up Windows AME. Is it booting Windows AME? Or is it booting the... Yeah. It booted Windows AME. It's not booting from this. Alright. Let's go into the bus then. As if I can remember which button it is. I think it was F2 to get into the bus. What might have been F8? Right, let's see what we've got here. Boots. First boot option, yeah, we want, we want this, not this. Okay, will it do a UEFI boot, or will I have to select the other boot option? We'll see. Or are we just going to be staring at the thing? Okay, is this booting from the thumb drive? Yep, there we go. Right then, let's set up my credentials, or whatever you want to call them. English UK, that's all fine. Let's install Windows. Now, I'm doing this on a spare hard drive because I want to do a few little experiments. So if I mess this up, I'm not going to be like, whatever. Well, I will be like, whatever, but I won't be like, oh, whatever. Well, I don't have a product key, so we'll just go next. I have other ways to activate Windows. Accept, because... Uh -huh. Install Windows only. So, I'm just going to format this partition. Alright. And now we'll install my customised Windows on it. Also, I'm going to time how long this takes. So, currently it is 4.15. And I'll be back when this is all done. It's about five minutes later now. Okay, six minutes later now. As you can see, we're almost at 100%. Now, I think at this point I should say that when I did the customization of Windows 10, the customizing, you know, what's on Windows 10, I removed everything. All the apps, all the bloat, and all the other stuff that I'm never going to use. And all I left on was... MS Paint and the Photo Viewer. There isn't even a web browser. Everything else is going to be third-party stuff. Okay, so that whole process took six minutes approximately. So let's see what happens after it restarts. Can it even work? Can it even boot? Do we need the USB thumb drive? 
Okay, I think it's doing all of this off the hard drive. Let's just have a look at the picture on the camera, make sure that you can actually see what's going on. I've turned the f-stop right the way down so it's not glaring, so we can't see what's going on. This looks promising. I haven't seen a blue screen of death or any sad smileys. About eight minutes now. Is it going to load? Are we going to get it to a desktop? Or has it just outright crashed? I can hear the hard drive going. So we know it's doing something. Oh, it's looking good, it's looking good. Well, I'm just going to pause the camera while it's getting itself together. Okay, well it's been about 15 minutes now. It did reboot a few times which had me concerned but it still seems to be chugging ahead so just going to let it get on and do whatever it's doing. So this is taking a little longer than the installing Windows ME. I mean Windows AME. I call it Windows ME then. I used to have Windows ME. Buggiest Windows I ever used. Oh, alright. Let's just click. Yes, that's correct. I do not want to add a second keyboard layout. So the thing is, it never asked me for a, um, a password or a PIN number. And this is, this is the part where it does that. Let's see what's new with Windows. Well, there's not going to be much new on there, I can tell. Okay, it's been about 19 minutes now. So, we're finally at the part where I can put in all my information. Alright, so we're going to do cool dude clem. I don't want to use a password. There, is that good enough for it? Couldn't we just skip this part? Obviously not. What was my first pet's name? Well, we had a cat named Thatcher, named after England's Prime Minister at the time. And I can't even remember, I can't even spell. I think that's T-C-H, actually. I'm going to remember my password anyway. Security question 203, could we just do this? Name of the city where I was born. Well, everybody knows that. You know, maybe I shouldn't be showing this on the internet. Childhood nickname? Ah. Well, one of my childhood nicknames was Dork, but actually... I'm gonna put in Cool Dude Clem. Because that was my childhood nickname. So there's a useless fact you didn't know. Let's see. history. I don't care. Don't care about speech recognition. You can go away because I don't even have Cortana enabled on this, so that's not going to work anyway. Good. No to all of that. I don't care. All right. We'll put that onto basic. I thought I'd removed all the telemetry stuff. Or just click. I'm just going to click no to all of this. Because I don't want Microsoft collecting my personal data. I mean, who wants that? So, are we finally going to get to a desktop? Or has this all been for nothing? I'll be back when the screen comes back on. We has a desktop! With some of it out of the screen. Now this is exactly what happened with Windows ME, so... I mean Windows AME, so... I got a driver for that. That's no problem. Yes, I do want it to be discoverable by other PCs, because I want to share data. Among all the computers on my network. All two of my computers. So, we has a desktop. Sound appears to be working. Task view, let's see what that is. Okay, that's a new feature. I've never seen that before. Start menu. Nice and compact. No stupid bloat here. That's good. Let's see what we got in Windows Accessories. Okay, we got all those. 
administer the tools. Ease of access. There shouldn't not be much there. So yeah, we have a working bare bones system. So what I want to do is I want to do a few tests on this. First, I want to make sure that I can install a graphics driver. I want to make sure that it can play games. I want to make sure that it has internet access. And then I'm going to try installing a classic thing. So, I think the very next step is to install my graphics driver. So, on this hard drive, which I'm using for videos and stuff, I have the very driver we need. Let's see if it installs. Yes, I want to run it. Maybe I should have clicked run as administrator, but let's see. Okay, that looks good. Install. Can you hear that noise out there? Some inconsiderate and selfish twat is making a lot of noise. It's not next door's music, it's all that DIY noise. Yes, I do want to make the resolution higher. Right, let's get this installed. Hopefully it didn't just crash and exit itself. No, okay, we'll go with Express Install. I'll accept that, let's just, um, I'll be back when this is done. Okay, we're done. Oh, actually, I should have pressed Finish. I think that would have been a much better option. And of course, the computer has got to reboot. So, I better let it get on with that, and then we'll try it with some games. Although, in my personal opinion, the driver's already installed and ready. So while all that's going on, let me take a moment to talk to you about... Bet you thought I knew what I was going to do then, didn't you? But anyway, I've started work on animating episode 7 of the Star Kids. Or at least, what I've drawn of it so far. I've discovered a much better way of importing the pictures into Flash. Now, this was done the old way, importing the pictures into Flash, and then using Flash to remove the background in each drawing, and as you can see, it looks pretty bad around the edges. You can see all this flakiness, which really doesn't look all that good. However, here, I've discovered that I can make PNG files with transparencies in paint.net, and if I put, import those into Flash, I don't have to do any work in removing the background because I've already done that in paint.net. And if we zoom into this one that I've done here, you can see there's no flakiness around the edges. I suppose you want to know what these animations look like. Well, this is this one of the mad scientists running away. And here's what happens when Red tries to shoot a gun. And that twat is still making all that noise. Okay, back to our feature presentation. Okay, hope I've got the camera nice and level. I can't really tell how level it is on the viewfinder, that's why sometimes it looks like it's all like this. But, hopefully that's nice and level. So, just gonna go in here. I can see the resolution is much higher. This is definitely 12, um, 1920 by 1080. Right, let's see if we can bring in some games. First of all, I'm just going to right click, make sure we've got the Catalyst driver installed. Yep, there it is, Catalyst Control Center. So, I'm going to see if I can access my laptop's SD card over the Wi-Fi. There's if I can remember how to do it. I've had Windows 10 for about six months now, and I still don't know my way around. All right, we'll go into network. Let's see what it sees on the network. There it is, Cool Dude Clem HP. Let's go in there. Laptop SD. So, it's got network access. Let's go into some of the Windows games here. Let's find one that I know will run on Windows 10. There's quite a lot here, but I'll be back when I've installed a few games. Finally, now my laptop with the world's slowest Wi-Fi has copied the files over. 
So I've got three games here. I've got Sonic after the sequel. And that game uses Flash for the cutscenes, so I want to make sure that's working, because that's something I left in. I've got Sonic, an old version of Sonic World here that I found. And Outrun 2006. So let's see if Sonic World works. Now what's this that's just come up? Direct play, I have no idea what that is. It says it needs it though. Let's see if the game runs. As well now the graphic card is installed properly. Okay, I had no idea that was gonna come on that loud. That's not accessing my gamepad, is it? Yep, all the saves and everything are gone, so I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to do this with the keyboard, aren't I? It's also playing Windows. Actually, you know, let's go to Team. Team Sonic. Oh, look at little tails. Doesn't he look adorable? So, do we have all the levels that I downloaded on here still? Yeah, we've got those. <laughs> Alright. I just gotta do this. Let's go to Hogwarts. Even though I don't really care about Harry Potter, I just... This is one of the levels I downloaded just for the hell of it. Oh, Tails, you've got such an adorable little one. You know me. I absolutely adore Tails. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to be able to go over here. Alright, let's be Knuckles. Oh, I guess I am supposed to be into it. Ooh, I can see the entire map. Yeah, I'm definitely not supposed to be up here. Ooh, there's an extra life up there. Let's be Sonic again. Alright, bring it on! Cause I'm Sonic, the Hedgehog. Sonic's doing his Jesus impression. He's walking on water. Yep, Sonic's so afraid of water he won't even sink into it. Alright, we know that works. Let's try Sonic after the sequel. I may have to run this in compatibility mode. Alright, we don't want to be boring on Sonic, do we? No, we want the tails. Let's just see if the game starts. Actually, let's put it full screen. <laughs> Alright. Well, let's try running it in compatibility mode then. Yeah, I don't need to detect issues, just let me... Just let me do this! I'll troubleshoot the program my own way. Alright, let's put it on... Windows XP Service Pack 3. Let's test this. This wouldn't run. Yes, I do want it to work. I do want it to run. Alright, I'm just going to leave it in 
not full screen to start with. From Sonic World to Sonic World's Zip. Go. Oh yeah, I still have all my saves on here, that's great. Foliage furnace zone, that's my favorite. Let's go there. With little tailsy. The only thing that's a little bit annoying about this game is the frame rate. Like, speeds up and slows down for absolutely no reason at all. And I've done that on every single computer I've played this game. That's just some issue with the gaming. Okay, we know that works. So. Let's do one more game. Outrun 2006. Uh, where is it? Where is the egg? Uh, there it is. You mean Direct 9 was not found? Alright, so Outrun 2006 didn't run because we don't have Direct X9 on this thing. I always thought that if you have like Direct X, like Direct X 11, that would support all the previous versions of Direct X, but apparently that's not true. So. I've gone and downloaded DirectX 9. Um, so let's just go in here, because this is where I put it. So I'm going to install this, and hopefully we'll be able to run Outrun 2006. Okay, I'll just stick it in my documents. Is that good enough for you? Right. Let's go to my documents. Oh, damn it. I don't think I'll ever Managed to navigate my way around Windows 10. Never. Right, let's see which one is the one we need. There we go. Yes, I want to install that. So let's accept the agreement. There we go. It's installing DirectX 9 now. And hopefully that'll fix our little problem. Strange that Sonic World work because that uses DirectX 7. So not quite sure how that got away with it. Right. Let's try to run Outrun 2006, and I'm going to start it from the config file. Let's see, video settings, alright. Alright, we'll just have it with everything maxed out. That's absolutely fine to me. Let's see if it works. Okay, yeah, there we go. Excuse me, Ed, I'm just grabbing my gamepad, which I haven't actually plugged in, so... I I'll just drive with the keyboard. No, I don't want him, I want her. Let's have this nice black car. Automatic, because I would never be able to drive a manual transmission. Of course, you realise, I don't know what the controls are on the keyboard. I've always played this on the gamepad, but since I didn't... Disconnect my gamepad so I can plug in the other thing. Okay, arrow keys seem to do a pretty good job, so that's what I'm going to do. Yes, I'm, I'm very good at that, actually. I know how to do it on the gamepad. Maybe it's a quick tap on the brake. I'm trying to figure out how to drift it. Hmm. 
No, I just can't do it. So, it's looking good. It's looking very good. I made a checklist here of all the things that it needs to be able to do. Which I really should update. So, it installs without trouble. The drivers can be installed and they work. You can play games. So the next thing to test is whether Media Player Classic can be installed and whether we can play videos and flash animations. So we're going to install Media Player Classic from the k -like Codec Pack here. If it ever hurries up and unzips this file, of course. I'm waiting. Yup. This is what happens when you put a lot of stuff into one zip file. Or seven zip file in this case. Yep, that's the file I want to run. I always use this older version of the K-Lite codec pad because it's stable and has a working Motion JPEG codec. And I use Motion JPEG a lot because it's easy to work with. And yes, I do do H.264 for the final YouTube video, but for working with the source clips and everything, Motion JPEG is my go-to option. Alright. Let's just next everything, because there's no bloatware here, no bundleware either. All right, let's play a video. I'm sure I find something that's not going to get me into any copyright issues here. All right, let's try the Simpsons Tracy Ullman shorts. Well, it's changed to a motion media player classic icon, concert. So that's a good thing. Let's play one of these. See if that plays. <laughs> yep, that's Pretty playing. Fun. I was playing backwards. That was one of the ones I edited to make it play backwards. Let's try and find one that actually plays forwards. We'll be right back after this work. Not sure as that works. <laughs> yep, full screen works too. So here's one of my flash animations. Yes, you can. You can open this. You just don't know what it is. Okay, I'm asking a typical person about profanities. So, what do you think about profanities? Duh. Main love profanities. Yeah, I got in a bit of trouble uploading this one. Because people thought that this guy here... I was making fun of retarded people, and that was simply not the case. I was just, um, what's the word? I was just exaggerating how stupid people in this modern day and age are. That's another check. Finally, can we install classic themes? Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who say I shouldn't be doing this and freak out and think I should be punished and sent to the electric chair just for installing classic themes on Windows. Well, screw you. It's my Windows. I'll do what I want with it. First of all, I have got to do something about this horrible start menu. So I'm going to install the dreaded classic shell that everybody says I shouldn't use. Because we've got to do something about that awful start menu. Alright, so, classic shells installed. Yeah, I don't care about the README. So, you can just bugger right off. Replace start button. Yes, we want to do that. That's much nicer, isn't it? Hmm, what style should we have? Classic style? Classic with two columns? Windows 7 style? Yeah, I think we'll have this one, because that's nice and easy to navigate through. Now, isn't this much better? You can get to your things so much easier. I mean, look how easy it is to get to documents now. I just click this, go to documents, and there it is. Why any of you would prefer this awful, convoluted, hard to navigate through Windows 10 start menu, I really fail to see. And now we're going to install simple classic theme. I have this batch file here, which I've put into my downloads. So we're going to run this. Alright, 
I want to enable the classic. I probably should have run this as administrator, but... Yeah, I should have run it as administrator. Let's see if anything changes. That flat Windows 10 look is so boring! Right, I'm just gonna open a, another folder. Let's see if it's done anything. No, it hasn't. Alright. I run this as administrator this time. So, enable. Has it changed anything? Well, let's open a folder. And we still don't have the Windows 7. I mean, we still don't have the Windows Classic. Thing, but I think all we're going to need to do is a simple restart. And I'll be back. Okay. We rebooted. So, let's have a look at it now. Isn't that so much better? Now this, this looks like Windows. <clears throat> I can even customize all the colors. Because I got this thing here. Just so long as we don't go into settings. Because that's a little messed up. 9999 by 9999 pixels. And an error. Yeah, so we don't go into that. But we can customize all the colors. This is something that you cannot do on normal Windows 10. So, let's select a different color scheme. I paused the camera then because I sneezed. Let's have red, white, and blue. I have to reload this so the changes take effect. Let's load up another one! In a lovely shade of pink. And now I'm going to do my own customization. So I'm going to go into here. Into appearance. Put it onto normal Windows Classic. And I'm going to change the background. I'm going to change it to grey. A nice soothing grey. Let's have a look at it. It's so much more easier on the eyes. Now why couldn't normal Windows 10 have this kind of colour customization? And look, we even have gradients in the... Um, whatever that's called. Alright, let's have a look at some pictures here. I have no idea what it's going to bring up since I installed the... the um, classic theme, so let's see what happens if I try to load a picture. Hope the camera is still seeing this nice and sharp, because I shot a whole bunch of this footage earlier, and the stupid camera messed up, so... Let's have a look at what it brings up. Ah, yes. The, win the classic Windows Photo Viewer. Not the silly Windows 10 Photo Viewer, the proper Photo Viewer. And these are all the little bits and pieces for the episode 7 of the Star Kids, or at least what I've drawn so far. And these are transparent GIFs. I mean, transparent PNGs. Because if we go to one that isn't transparent, you can see the paper background. But on the ones that are transparent, let me just find one. The background's the same colour as the thing. And I can prove that. Let me just change the colours. Your appearance. Let's change this to... Know, let's make it green. Just for the hell of it. Okay. And I just have to refresh this folder. Alright, so we've got a nice green background now. Now, I just need to find my pictures. This could take a while because I've forgotten where they are. Oh, 
Alright, let's go back to the new folder and look at some of these again. And now look at it. I mean, is this just awesome or what? Oh, that's the space invaders. I can even animate them. Uh, yeah, you get the general idea. And no, I have not killed this version of Windows 10. I've made it better. So I think we can safely say everything gets everything. Stupid voice. So I think we can safely say that Everything gets a big check. Everything gets a big green tick. And well, that's just about it for this video, so until next time, goodbye. Hey, don't tell me that the camera has been blurred the whole time while I've been doing this. Please don't tell me the camera has been blurred the whole time. Focus, you fudge!